It is 8 o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's another DJ Roundtable show, and we have a great amount of DJs. And right now, well, we have one DJ missing, all the way from Australia. Here he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Diablo and Curry right there, our friend from Australia. And we had another Australian DJ just the other day. And also, dynablin has got a friend in the UK, so we might have a DJ from the UK in here as well. You know, it shows that we are international, and we try to have uh, many voices here on the show. As always, we have our great amount of DJs here. And we have you here, and thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for stopping by, and thank you for hanging out with us, usually on Tuesday nights on Twitch. If you are watching this over on the tubes, YouTube, do me a favor, help me slay that YouTube beast that always likes to keep us down, but not out. And I can help, you guys can help me, and I need your help get to get more and more subscribers so we can do more and more of the show. Uh, <laughs> do me a favor, do a couple of things. First thing first, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way you know when we upload. Second thing, get the thumbs up so that way it tells YouTube, hey, we're doing good things. Make sure the bell icon is also marked. And one other thing, share it with another DJ. You hear it in the intro song when you watch it on YouTube. I know uh, one of my friends said he, he loves the music, doesn't like the lyrics. I'm like, I made the song. What do you want me to do? I'm not a professional singer, you know? But anyways, I get a bang out of the song every time I play it. Uh, but he's a, he's a great DJ and I always like talking to him. He, uh, we always give each other a little uh, nudges here and there, but he's a great guy. And uh, as well, hopefully you also enjoy the beautiful, wonderful uh, ramblings we have here in the show. Uh, DJ Mikey Mike, all the way from Pennsylvania. I see you right there. Yep. Hey, Mikey Mike. Enjoying yourself. Hopefully the wildfires are not by you. I know a little bit of Pennsylvania. I know parts of New Jersey, New York, out east out there have a little bit of fires out there. California's got a few fires. Um, right now it's that time of year where stuff is dry and it's fall. And uh, here in the United States, um, certain parts of the country have not been getting the rain they need to just because it's fall. Usually fall is more wet, but this fall is a little more dry. We'll see what we get with snow now. That will be very interesting to see next uh few months how much snow we get I, we got djs from all around the country north east south and west we have california north carolina south carolina new york wisconsin illinois indiana and the great state of ohio all covered here plus australia so we have a whole nother continent as well as another country covered here and we thank you all for tuning in here and also to make sure that you enjoy yourself uh mikey mike says about 45 minutes south of him and he said, hello, DJ Cool Thing, right to you. So he called you out. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, wa I wanted to touch on this because uh, I know Cool Thing's been doing it. And I know we're coming up into our not as busy season. Um, usually, you know, December, November, December, January, February. Usually a little more quiet in most of the parts of the country. I think California's a little different because you have more fair weather. And maybe in South Carolina, a little more fair weather. But in the northern area, uh, we are getting into the uh, colder months and the snow and rain and so forth. And I know uh, Hunter is building and has built a uh, DJ playground in one of his uh, parking areas in the garage. Uh, some of us have, you know, toy areas or in my case, my office, I have a mixer right in front of me and a little controller. Uh, but... How do you practice with downtime? You're down the next couple of months, and what are you doing? What are you doing in your business? Now, Kurt in Australia, he's going into summer, but he where he's at in his part of Australia is always warm. Uh, it's not like he gets really heavy in temperature fluctuation. It's hot and then hotter, uh, the way he explained it. Um, but I'm sure you have some downtime, especially with the holidays coming up with Christmas, and New Year's, and if there's any other holidays in there in Australia, I know for us, in a couple of weeks, we have Thanksgiving coming in, which is another big holiday. And the day after Thanksgiving is Black Friday. So are you doing anything different? Are you doing anything? Are you trying to set yourself up for practicing? How are you trying to keep yourself relevant 
during the downtime. So I'm going to start with Hunter, who, again, has built his uh, DJ playground in the garage. Uh, Hunter, I, I see that. Is that your game that you're going to practice until uh, spring yep. when you start getting some gigs? Well, I'm actually, I have a gig in January, uh, a baby shower. My cousin is having a baby girl. She's due in February, so we're going to have a, a baby shower in January. And then I might have a DJ gig in February for the Night to Shine prom, which is a prom that I do with special needs. It's sponsored by the Tim Tebow Foundation. So I have built a DJ setup with all my old DJ gear, my old table, my DDJ 400, my old Rock Par 50s. My old Ion Audio Topian Maxes, and I just bought some new DJ, DJ gear like the Behringer Xenix 802S. I bought some cables to, to connect it all together, and it looks really good. I even decorated for Christmas. So, so the question is, whose spot did you take over? Did you take over your mom's spot or your dad's spot or an extra um, spot? So the, the spot I took over was where my dad's lifting or weightlifting stuff was, so we had to get rid of that and take it to the thrift store. And it was wide open, so I was like, hey, I might as well build a DJ set up there for my garage parties and for practicing. Don't uh, don't you park cars in the garage? <laughs> no, no, we park them outside the house. Oh, wow. See? Yeah. I, if, if I had space in my garage, I would park uh, a vehicle in the garage. I don't know about you. But that's what it's designed for. But oh. fortunately, I'm like most people, my garage has uh, some DJ yeah, gear in there, but some uh, other junk in there, too. And it's like, ah, God, God. Got to clean out. I think maybe this this spring we got to do a little uh, spring cleaning. <laughs> so I'm going to go to Dwayne. Dwayne, that uh, is in Ohio. I know that uh, he's now officially retired as a school teacher full time. Probably goes back and does a little teaching here and there. But um, if you're not teaching, again, you're, you have a lot of things going on. How do you practice? How do you keep up with things? How do you keep yourself relevant in the DJ world? And it, are you planning to do anything else? During the next few months, uh, when it's you know holiday season and you know in the dental winter with uh, your business, well, basically I have a whole bunch of um, songs that I have, so I'm be busy trying to um, get those songs together and then do the paperwork so I can go ahead and release them. Also, I've been I have took um, like some line dance classes, so I've been like going over the videos and like trying to make a cheat sheet uh, a sheet for them. So I'm trying to put that and make it like a little book for that. And then also I'm doing a lot of promo stuff and video work. So I'm pretty much still busy. And I'll just be releasing stuff. Hopefully by the first of the year, I have everything released. Good. Good for you. Hmm. And then um, are you looking at, I, I know uh, Hunter doesn't do uh, wedding shows. Are you looking at any kind of wedding show like that coming up for the off season? I'm not going not to do one. I went to one that was here in Cleveland yesterday. No, not yesterday, but Sunday. What did you and, think? Mm, I was like, that's, uh, it wasn't for me. I don't know if it was because that was my first one, but basically they had it in a big, huge um, convention center, but they only had like a little, uh, you know, a spot for it. And it, to me, it was like, super crowded i got there right when it opened up so it wasn't too bad but then once i turned around it was just flooded it's like i couldn't you really couldn't move it's almost like you have to be you have to have that kind of aggressive kind of i guess mentality to get, try to weave through everybody to get up front so i wasn't too impressed with it okay but i didn't notice but i did notice that the five djs that was were there they had their little gig bar lights up and a few moving, moving heads and they had a t their TVs up showing, you know, some video of their um, business, but it just didn't, I, I just know I'm not ready to spend no, like a thousand dollars for a booth to, for that yet. So, but I'm, I'm thinking about going to the one that is another one coming here in January. So I'm thinking about still going to just to look around and see if there's something different. Maybe, hopefully, it'll be more roomier and not congested. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, because uh, I, I I'm already planning my wedding shows. I did uh, when we did we did we ended the year with eleven wedding shows total, and we got a few we got quite a few weddings off of it. So, it's one of the things that you know 
some wedding shows worked, some wedding shows didn't work. There's wedding shows that did work. We'll definitely go back and do them again. The ones that didn't work, we're not going to do them again because I don't want to waste money. But uh, yeah, it's one of the things that, you know, that's part of plan we do. Plus practicing, you know, again, you got to keep your practice. Do you have a little practice area in your office there? Do you have like a controller or a mixer or do you have anything there you can kind of like, you know, just sit, sit back and like on a Saturday, Sunday, you have no gigs going, just, you know, just practice a little, make sure you keep yourself going? Yeah, that. And then also speaking about practicing, um, what is it, Algorithm DJ yeah, Algorithm. Pro came yeah, up yeah, with yeah, the okay. VR thing. So I thought it was pretty cool that I could hook up my physical controller and DJ with that in, you know, the VR space. So I, I'm going to do a video on that one since I've used um, Tribe. And Tribe is pretty good. I like it because you can um, you can customize your deck that you're going to DJ with. But the bad, the downside, I would say, is that you have to hold the controllers. And it's kind, it's kind of like funky holding something in your hand, whereas... Um, DJ Pro, you can actually use your hand and it feels more natural. So I'll be busy playing with that one as well. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, DJ Brantley, I know up there in Wisconsin, you do a lot of clubs and other events, but uh, to keep yourself uh, going, uh, are you booked up for all your uh, club events or do you still, uh, are you doing some wedding shows? Are you doing some more stuff for this coming up and i know because you're in the, you're in the clubs constantly you're you don't need a practice area but i know you do have a practice area there behind you correct oh yeah and i've got one downstairs in my living room so i mean honest to god's truth i will probably practice two or three days a week on one of my setups either and because the one in the living room when my kid Kids getting ready to sleep. I might just screw around a little bit, mark cue points, and check new music out. When I really want to dig into things a little bit on my own, while she's at school, I'll come up here on my RZ and really work stuff out. And I, honest to God's truth, wish Pioneer would make a deck like the RZ again. It'd be a dream. But uh, when it comes to wedding shows in the season, I've... Honest to God's truth, I've got one Saturday I'm willing to part with in the prime of next year, and that's August 30th. And aside from that, I'm booked all the way till middle of November for weddings next year and what I was willing to take on my Saturdays. My club schedule outside of three weekends going into June, I'm waiting, and those are basically on hold. I'm just trying to figure out, is it going to be like Wisconsin Dells? and milwaukee or a madison milwaukee how i route myself that way and i was actually hoping apoc would uh give me a buzz one or be on one of these nights because i was going to uh, ask him something about one of the clubs that are is in kind of one of our both stomping grounds or ranges we <coughs> excuse me both go to but i'm also going to do a couple of wedding shows because i really want to since i've left ever after I've really got to push the premium pretty brand now. And I mean, knock on, knock on wood. I'm fairly booked up. I just scored a few for 2026 and one for 2027. So I'm not freaking out about being a solo op, but I don't necessarily want to waste time in filling those dates further down the road and filling up some of the random Sundays I have on my calendar. So totally the wedding shows that. being, and exactly and the wedding shows one i'm not sure i really want to get into but because it's the definite budget couples last minute and the last minute ones i've realized yeah you'll at least pay for my minimum package at 2k cool and so for those yeah maybe i will see what sundays i can pick up from one of them and the other one i can definitely push the premium super pretty nice setups and all of that and hopefully fill out a chunk of my 2026 from it and yeah it wasn't cheap it's around a grand for each one of the things i'm getting into but in the long run i need honestly i need to book one wedding from each and i'm covered the advertising i've put out this year i did like online and uh print uh web m uh web plan it's a company that prints a actual magazine for brides that they can take notes in 
the whole nine yards and get ideas from different weddings and all that. So I paid for an ad there. I paid for a whole, my new business cards, new rat cards, new POS stuff, all. And I'm honestly even considering getting a full eight by eight backdrop with just my logo. So when people take pictures of my booth, that's in the background as well. When I do these wedding shows, is it going to yeah, be worth Matt, like Matt does that? Matt does that with his, uh, his stuff. The, the company that he got um, my and his booth made by, they do uh, uh, backdrops and stuff like that. And okay. uh, you can get a custom made booth uh, backdrops. So you can just measure how far you want, you know, like eight feet wide and how tall you want, yeah. eight feet tall, and get the pipe and drape designed for that and do a custom backdrop for that. And I would definitely talk to I'm Matt about that, about uh, the company he deals with, because they do really great work. I'm I'm definitely thinking about it, but I want to see where, where I come out because, you know, obviously Christmas money, club schedule, not as much money, but I have six weddings in December, so why am I really kind of freaking out? I don't know. And my the rest of my club schedule is, like, jam solid where I've got, like, one rare corporate event in December that I've got two club nights in a row after that, and one of the club nights is on the same night as the corporate event. Like, I'm cramming gigs in. So – that's kind of like my whole philosophy until July 4th next year rolls around when I take a weekend off. There you go. There you go. And then uh, we got some chat here. Uh, Mikey Mike said wedding shows are extinct in his area in northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, Kevin, new Picard, uh, there are less expensive ones out there. I know uh, Kevin's done some ones out in his area. Uh, you may want to talk to Kevin because I know you and Kevin talk, Dwayne. Uh, you may talk to him on some shows, um, get some ideas there. And then Mike also said for Brentley, uh, make, uh, well, he says, make you, uh, make sure your, uh, copyright your stuff. So copyright your logo and stuff like that. If you're going to do that, put a little copyright insignia and, you know, copyright it that way it protects your, uh, you know, IP. Um, I'm going to go to, uh, Kurt down on Australia there. DJ Diablin, um, with everything else down there in Australia, I know, again, you guys, where you're at, it's always summer. But uh, with the holidays coming up and stuff like that, do you take time off? Do you try to uh, do some little practice? Uh, do you try to take a step back? Do you do wedding shows? Are there wedding shows a thing down in Australia? I have to confess, I haven't practiced for two months, more or less, so... <laughs> Maybe I should just leave now, but I do have a little studio downstairs that I built. Um, but you know, with gigs, like you set it up nicely, you set up the lights, you do a bit of practice and then, and then you've got a gig coming up. So I've got to strip it all down again and you know, it, get, it gets a bit monotonous setting it up and stripping it down and setting it up again. But um, yeah, I got, I got to get my act together get a bit of practice done and get into the stems on Serato, Serato stems. Um, I'm a little bit old school. I, I still prefer the, um, the, the DJ intro and outros or your, your acapella intro, outro, you know, when I mix. Um, yeah, I should, I really need to get into the stems properly and get that happening, make my life a little bit easy. Uh, as for wedding shows, um, they do have, I think, one or two here a, a year, but they're only little, so I kind of don't don't tend to bother with them too much. Yeah, okay. so I've got a few gigs coming up and all good. Well, again, practicing, you know what, you have to put up a, a whole entire thing. Like, for me, I have, uh, and I also have, I have two of them. I have one I have in my truck. And I have one here. It's a Hercules little controller. It plugs in, uh, has a headphone jack on one end, and it has another uh, one eighth or three point five millimeter uh, jack on the other end for audio out, and a USB. Yeah. Uh, the USB goes to the computer. I use a computer sound card. I have two Pioneer um, monitor speakers in here. That's my that's my speakers here. Uh, that I you know. Uh, got because uh, I talked to a few people, Pioneer, and, and including um, uh, Jay, 
And he, he's like, these are great speakers. And I got them. I will say they're great speakers. They're nice and loud. I have them here. And then I have my main computer, my main library here. So if I want to practice, which I do once in a while, I'll move out the controller. It's always connected. It's connected right now. And I will uh, play music and just, you know, go through songs. But I also look at charts and see what's popular and see what yeah. people will want and, and what people want to see. So next couple of months, it's not just hang a play stuff I know. I'm going to look for stuff for new stuff. Say, hey, is this is this relevant? Is it going to be relevant? That's the big question, you know. Um Good little but, controller. Those yeah, Hercules, I should actually get one. Yeah, it, it's it's $99 here in the U.S. I don't know what it is in Australia, mm -hmm. maybe $200. But it's inexpensive. It, it doesn't use, it doesn't have a, uh, a, um, a sound card in it. It uses the sound card off the computer. Yeah. So uh, you don't need a really crazy computer. I, I have a crazy computer here because I'm crazy <laughs> for, for computers and technology. But... It's one of the things that, like, my my desktop here with all my monitors and stuff like that, um, this is what I use. And this is this is what I use to stream with. This is what I use to uh, sit back and have fun with. And this is also what I used when I work on music for a, a couple of mine. So it, it's one of the things that this is my studio as well as my work area as well as yeah. what I used to do the show with. So it, it, it's one of the things that... Um, you don't have need to put speakers and lights and stuff like that. Uh, Hunter, he wants to do that. You can do whatever you want to. You want to set your booth up and everything like that, or you want to be simple. Whichever way, as long as you're getting a little bit of practice here and there, that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go next to um, North Carolina to Jeff, which I know he has some school events coming up. I know he has uh, stuff with uh, other events other than weddings. And I know he doesn't usually do wedding shows, but when you're in a downtime with the holidays coming up here, I know you got family, you have friends. Uh, we all have family, you know, we're trying to spend time with. Um, but how do you, you know, how do you handle the practice? How do you handle, you know, getting stuff ready? How do you handle all that? Well, I've got a basement and uh, sort of store all my gear. So I um, uh, usually keep it set up uh, to practice, you know, uh, once or twice a week at least. But this, uh, Usually in the downtime, December, January is my time to uh, just go through my gear, make sure everything is repaired. Um, I like to tighten all the screws on the speakers so they don't rattle. Um, I like to wash my uh, all my scrims, you know, that are uh, that are or were white. <laughs> so it's a good time to get that done. Um, you know, it's just a good time to clean the gear to, you know, take care of the gear. And it's also for me, I look at uh, this time is, you know, work on my DMX programming for my lights. Uh, it's a good time to take care of that and just, you know, uh, get rid of any um, presets uh, that I don't use much and move them to another page, uh, move some ones that I've created some new presets to my front page. Uh, you know, it's just uh, taking care of business with DMX because, um, you know, you update that, you know, about once a year. And, uh, and you know, if you buy any new lights, I'm not really planning on buying any new lights, but um, if you do now, you know, now's a good time to uh, program them in for all your presets and, uh, and all your shows. So, so those are things I do to keep busy. And, um, uh, as far as wedding shows, um, I'll probably do one, uh, but it's a freebie. Uh, it's at a, um, it is at, uh, uh, it is a venue that I DJed at many times. They put on a wedding show there once a year and, uh, there's no charge to the, to the, uh, vendors there and they're, but they're selected hand selected. So, uh, so I'll probably do that and, you know, and did you see what comes up? So yeah, stay busy and stay healthy. And that's the important thing when you're saying that, um, uh, you need, you're going to work on your speaker, work on stuff, make sure stuff is clean, make sure stuff is tightened. It's very important because the fact that maintenance is also part of DJ life. A lot of people don't always do that, especially scrims or covers or anything like that. Uh, I really feel that it's very, very important that you um, that you take time to make sure your stuff is in order. You know, you want to make sure when you go out next year. Uh, everything is clean. Everything is in order. Everything looks great. It's not uh, beat up. It's not, you know, uh, look ratty. 
this is a time to order parts. You know, if you're if your uh, screen on your micro on your microphone is bad, replace that. If your um, front of your speaker has you know damage to it, replace parts. This is the time of the year when you start doing that, and hopefully during the year you save money up doing stuff that you have a few dollars to spend on those maintenance items too. One thing I will uh, say for here in the U.S., um, Harbor Freight, <clears throat> and I've seen this on a tool, guys. Harbor Freight has a mini tool uh, box for $18, $17.99. It's, it's on Harbor Freight's website. It comes in three colors, black, blue, and red. It's two drawers and a top. And it's a mini. It's probably about this big, probably about the size of a red box. But I was looking at that. I want to get one for here for a lot of small items like, you know, connectors and stuff like that. Have a drawer that are nice and even and clean. You're going to put some uh, different things in there that you can have in your office, have it off to the side, you know, and have stuff organized. And I, I take this because I don't know if you've seen it or not, uh, Brian S. Red has been doing a um, basically a clean out of his older gear. That he has sitting there in his storage area of his house, and he uh, has all this stuff, but it's all organized. He has um, um, craftsman toolboxes, like you would find a mechanic uh, shop. Nice big toolboxes. Open a drawer up, and it has all these pieces and parts for um, uh, for trussing. All these pieces and parts for connector for lighting, like the little safety. Uh, uh, bars and latches and stuff like that all that little stuff like that in there all organized so this is something for again $18 it's small it's not big not huge but you could organize some smaller things in there really nicely and have it in your office and then have a place as a repository for those smaller things um and I, I, I definitely I, I want to get one one it's cool uh it's U.S. General so you know again it's it's, it's Harbor Freight not the highest quality but it's it looks nice and it's kind of you know a nice thing. I'm not gonna put a tool set in there, but it's a nice little thing for small little items uh, that you know you you deal with for DJ. Uh, DJ Souls is Matt in California. I know you're always on top of things, but uh, how do you practice? Where do you practice at? And are you looking at doing anything this upcoming uh, downtime for uh, basically for uh, December and January and February? Uh, I don't practice. Um, I don't think I ever have. Don't feel the need to. Um, I'm perfect. So there's that. Uh, no, I just, I don't, I don't practice. I practice at gigs. Um, I like to go into my weddings as like, you know, I'm going to try all this new stuff. There's certain mixes that I like always run together, certain songs and stuff, but like, I don't really practice. So, uh, yeah, so I don't practice, um, it, I do use the off season. I don't really do it at a specific time. Like if I feel like reprogramming some lights when I have some free time, then I do that. Um, so I have the new eliminator mega washes that I tried out. I like like using those. Um, so I'll probably do a bit more tweaking on those. And then uh, the current lights that I have, I want to add a few pro programs and color chases and other fun stuff because certain things get stale after a while. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, we have we do one wedding show in January, one in March, and then one in September, one in October. There's there's just two companies here that do them, so we do one with each, uh, or I guess two with each every year. But it's getting to the point where we're like pricing ourselves out of wedding shows. Um, so maybe we'll just spend that money elsewhere because they are a little bit pricey, and uh, I feel like the clients there are not the clients they'll sound so interested and then you go to follow up and they'll say oh you're too expensive or they'll just ghost to you mm -hmm. so you know, always always a chance you get with any wedding show that you might uh run into someone saying that uh you're not you know you're too expensive well you know that's the thing is that a lot of people the biggest thing people don't recognize and don't understand is that the biggest thing they walk away from is regret they regret having a good dj or a fun time at their show at their wedding mm -hmm. And if, if they don't see that uh, value, then, you know, again, they, they want they want uh, shot by price. 
then fine. That that's 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 great. That's not the clientele I go for or you go for. Uh, but the thing is that sometimes you know people want to have uh, the cheapest possible, and unfortunately, you know, um, you don't get every uh, every client, and you don't want every client either because then you're too crazy busy and you're turning people down, and you don't want to take you know uh, people who uh, want everything and only want to pay a few dollars. Again, there's there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of customers out there. And you can use it to find the right person that fits your, you know, your business. Not every person is a, a Von Maurer or a, a Macy's customer. Some people are Walmart and uh, Target. But you find what fits your budget and what fits your clientele and what kind of service you give. And that's the big thing. Uh, make sure you don't, uh, don't compromise on what you give. You know, you're giving 110%, you should charge accordingly. I would never tell a DJ you should discount. I always feel that you should charge what your market supports, what your area supports. And I'm never going to tell a DJ what to charge. That's the one thing I, I don't want to do. But I do feel some guys should charge more uh, because they're worth it. And I really do feel that way. Um, Taylor and Jordan. I know in, well, you guys are switched. You guys are not like your names. <laughs> it's Jordan and Taylor right now on the screen. <laughs> Uh, you two guys, I know you guys been uh, hanging out there for a little bit, running around stuff, and I know you just got home. Um, what about you guys? Uh, you got, do you guys practice? I know you guys have the basement. I know you guys have uh, your office. Do you guys have a place to practice? Or uh, and I know we we've done some wedding shows together. You and uh, the the three of us, actually four of us, including Tracy. Uh, are you having any other wedding shows you get coming up besides the one we usually do? wedding show what is it in march yes we have done them and i just feel like it's people just want cheap and i spend too much money you got you got to you got to up your volume you're really really quiet i can't hear you hello is that better turn up the volume a little bit hello there we go okay they're expensive and i feel like we don't really get anything from them um mm. most often um when it comes to practicing we do have our controller set up but i don't know i don't practice i practice i guess when i work that's i mean i just feel like i have a hard time just going down there and just you know practicing i don't know i just I don't know. We you, do you sometimes. Ever, you, you, you never when you guys ever get the itch just to play music for sometimes. fun? Sometimes. No, we do sometimes, but I just, I feel like I can try things and come up with better ideas when I'm under the pressure of being in front of people, I guess. Um, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah, I, I totally understand practicing, that. I, I'll set cue points and, you know, okay. kind of do that mm -hmm. kind of stuff and kind of see what works but yeah i f i'm the same way i find it like better practice to go out to a bar where i feel like i you know see if something works there. um you well, know you get, where you it's get not feedback. a wedding you get feedback from people yeah and you, you get, to you see get people. feedback and okay um i i i do like to practice when people are around like i'll have if a buddy's over or something like some someone to entertain almost uh it just feels weird when I'm down there by myself, but I do go down there. But as well, far as Tracy, I, Tracy and I will be over this Friday, so we'll we come over. No, it's kidding. <laughs> as far as off season, uh, I like to go through gear and like go through the cases that and like make you know take out the things that have ended up in there that aren't that don't need to be in there. Put everything kind of back in its place. Um, we do have actually quite a few gigs coming up, so. And we're always busy doing something. So I, I I also know that uh, you guys have been having your own little garage sale down there uh, at, for your business with stuff that you have a lot of. Uh, hopefully that's going well for the two of you. You're getting rid of uh, yeah. I gotta make room for new stuff. Get rid of the old. Make room for the new. <laughs> We've been organizing a lot too, just trying to go through it because a lot of it we never really went through, and it's just like. This this is still in the original box that we got it when we bought the business, and we've never even we didn't know we had it. We should just get rid of it. We're just storing it, not using it. So, 
And that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's really smart to do because it, it, it's, it's money sitting there, especially, uh, again, you guys a little bit more than DJ and especially with decor and everything else I've seen some of the stuff you have for sale. Um, it's, it's, it's stuff to not some bad dump and get rid of and make room for new stuff, but also it frees up some cash too, because mm -hmm. a few extra bucks, it helps. It, it helps a lot. I know, mm -hmm. uh, again, talking to the Brian, uh, with his sale, for the lights he had, some of the lights are like eight, nine years old. He demoed them. He's had them. He's used them a little bit here and there. And he doesn't have the room for it because now he's other companies and say, hey, you know, we want you to demo this. We want you to do this. Mm -hmm. um, or, hey, I want to buy this. I want to buy that. If you want to go buy something, you don't have the room for it. What are you going to do? And his wife will kill yeah. him. You guys want more lights. So <laughs> he needs to have Definitely. his, you know, he's purging too. And yeah, trends change, you know, especially something, decor. especially, yeah, with the decor. So, you know, you kind of got to get a feel for what people are liking. And, you know, if you really haven't used it, our, our philosophy is if we haven't used it in the past year, let's think about if we even need it or should get rid of it or, you know, so. I know. I'm actually doing the same thing. I'm actually getting rid of my DDJ SR2, some old par lights that I haven't used in years. So okay. I, I, got, I got a question for you. I, I know uh, Taylor and Jordan, they were uh, doing um, stuff on Facebook Marketplace and selling uh, some of the stuff on Facebook and I'm sure a few other uh, things. But like Hunter and uh, everyone else, if you're selling stuff, where, where where's the place you usually go to? Who usually uses like Facebook Marketplace to sell their yes. older equipment? I want to see a show of hands. Show of hands who uses... Facebook Marketplace to show and sell their old equipment. Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Mm. Okay. So that that's the important thing too is you know what um, where to sell that equipment. If you have stuff sitting around, uh, be it older gear, you don't want to have um, stuff just sitting there and wasting taking space up. So selling is an important thing. So Hunter, you know, hopefully he sells it, you know, to uh, oh. whomever. <laughs> store yeah i'm taking it to a thrift store there you right go. Again, some people use a thrift store some people go to uh you know donate it some people will, will sell it you know but hopefully you know when you get your that extra stuff you uh can offload it very quickly <laughs> brian has uh, read selling the um the, like a wash and a, a mini kent or deco effect in one like an old school light and i thought that was awesome like i'd you can't buy them anymore so you know if you're if you're not using a set of lights and someone else you know maybe they can make use of them or, or want them like but yeah you can't buy them anymore and i i saw we had them for sale and i thought oh snap i'd love a set of them yeah there was uh one of the lights i talked about um just you know in, i wasn't going to buy just asking i'm like i was remember when the light came out and it's like nine years old the light so it's long discontinued but he's used it a few times, and it's like, other than some dust on it, it's in perfect condition. When he was demoing lights, those lights right there, those are more lights he's selling. Those lights are still in working condition. They just have dust on them. They haven't been used in a while. But if you want some older lights, if you're in the Milwaukee area, first thing. Second thing, if you want to really, really drive to Milwaukee, uh, you can get a hold of Brian and tell him, hey, I want to buy those lights from you. And then give him an offer, and he's taking an offer for some of his stuff. But that's the other thing is that, you know, making sure that we're offloading older equipment. Um, if it was COVID time, you could double the price on everything. This is true. This is very true. And Mike also says, do any of the DJs here use QSC Touch Mix? Anyone here use QSC Touch, mi touch Mix? No. All right, Mike. Sorry, no one uses Touch Mix from QSC. I've looked at it a few times, but never played with it. I know uh, QSC is a lighting got... program, or mixer. mixer. I got the draw track. It's a mixer. Yeah, QSC just got purchased. Uh, oh, who bought them? I, I just saw the thing. Someone bought QSC. Um, I can't remember who it is uh, off the top of my head, but uh, I'm sure someone will I tell me in a little bit. Uh, but QSC just got purchased by someone. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what what they do. Probably not much, uh, but QSC has a strong name. Aquidity Brands. What was it? Aquidity Brands. Okay, yeah. They, Equity uh, they, Brands, I'm sorry. 
I remember seeing the video because they do a lot in professional, like, uh, sound and audio for corporate, like, offices and for meetings and stuff like that. And they had a relationship with QSC, so they bought QSC. I couldn't remember who it was. But um, that'll be interesting what happens with that. So, Chris... Um, yes. you're, you're my last, you're my last one. <laughs> best for well, last. Well, well, best for last, Sorry. I guess, you know, <laughs> I know you're going to Arizona for the, uh, foam, uh, uh, foam service for the foam stuff. Um, what else are you doing? How are you practicing? How, where do you practice at? Well, I don't do too much practicing. It's stuff when I decide to set up the prime four in the, in the basement. If I feel like, uh, Hey, I heard some mixes. I got an itch to trap something new different even upgrade or up should I say update the prime four uh that i got but i still use my laptop with serato you know i still have that prime four with the two terabyte ssd and honestly i i have not updated the prime four ssd i uh, will tell you in about two years so i'm still connecting that laptop directly to that prime four i'm enjoying serato dj pro with it so it's it's rock solid people I tell this to him like like wow yeah that Prime Four has really gotten some some good stuff and then that one's going on the Prime Prime Four Plus, you know I'm like okay very good you know what about some of the other controllers out there not to dog some of them there's some amazing controllers that have come out recently but a, a, as for practicing yeah it's when I get an itch or I'm going out you know Thursdays because it's college session still so when the winter hits um, they they don't go out as much but. Fellow DJ friend of mine, you know, we, we talk about songs, mixes, transitions, and it's kind of for both of us, it's open format going back and forth. What, what are our minds spinning? What do we feel like playing? Hey, what would go with this? What have we heard in the past? And we got that synergy going between each other. And sometimes he'll even let me uh, just do a mix or two, you know, just to have some fun. And that's, that's the fun part is, you know, keep, keeping up on stuff. You know, again, I, I like... I like chilling here for a little bit. Uh, I'll do it during the daytime, work on a few things coming here. Um, one of the things that uh, I also do, Dwayne also does it too. We uh, we deal with a, a software program mm -hmm. online, uh, Suno. Uh, we both have pages up there and we make AI music. So we take AI, I write lyrics. I tell the song what I want it to do, how I want it to sound, stuff like that. And I make some songs here and there. I, I have, uh, I want to say 25, 30 songs. They're not the best songs in the world because it's AI singing it and doing the music, but there, there's some. There's a couple of them which are pretty, uh, pretty decent. Um, and again, I, I do that. I have fun with that uh, with music, you know. So I can call myself a producer a little bit. Dwayne can call himself a producer, um, but you know, it, it's stuff like that. You, you try to expand your mind. You try to figure things out and try to look for things, and it's 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 always fun. And to me, you know, sitting here. During the daytime for a little bit, and just again kicking the crawler out, and again I have tons of music videos going through. Let's say I'm going to do all 90 set, and I used to before Twitch changed their rules here on Twitch for music. I would do uh, Friday, Saturday, and do Monday sets, do uh, five five o'clock uh, traffic jam, do from five, uh, from four to like six, uh, play two hours of music during the weekdays here on Twitch. But since they changed the prop uh, the rules. I don't want to do it because I don't want to get in trouble with Twitch with music. So I forego that. So I just do the show here on Twitch. And, you know, it, it's one of the things that uh, uh, I always, I, I kind of miss that. But since I have not been doing it on Twitch, I just do it here for myself and, you know, see about blending and doing things. But it, to me, it's it's fun. It's fun playing with the music, fun playing with the stuff that you have. And just, you know, trying to see also what's out there. You know, like one of the songs for this past weekend uh, you know, hot to go. It's been hot, very, very popular. Uh, but the other one's "Good Luck, Babe" from uh, her, from uh, from her own. And um, that right there this weekend, I got I got asked that three three times on the request sheet. You know, so I'm like, okay. So we did that. We did "Hot to Go" earlier, and then we, later on, we did you know "Good Luck, Babe." And it's a little slower song. It's not as fast as "Hot to Go." Not bad. I think it's 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 decent, but I think Hot to Go is way better. I think it's it's more popular. It, it has that dance everyone's doing. That's kind of like the newer version of uh, YMCA. Uh, I don't know if uh, it, if she's popular down there by you. Hot to Go down there in Australia, uh, Chapel Run. Uh, but oh, um, it's yeah. a popular song up here. Yeah, it, she's she's uh, she's got red curly hair. She's uh, the video is pretty. Uh, the cheerleader. 
video is pretty cool. The video is pretty cool. It's, 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 it's a retro 80s sounding song. It does sound trolley from the 80s. But um, yeah. and there's a dance to it for Hot to Go, and she does it in the video, and uh, people uh, follow that and do that. It was a, it's it's also a trend on TikTok, you know. So it, it's a popular thing here, and I know hey, in buddy. Australia, Nut, uh, Nutbush City is your uh, cha cha slide, yeah. Cupid shuffle, and <laughs> yeah. Macarena. Hey, all hey the buddy, have the you one. noticed? Have you noticed on Chapel Run's song, um, "Good Luck, Babe"? The tempo. Yeah, it's, it's lower. As a DJ, as a DJ, it, it just it it stands out to me. The the tempo changes. Yeah. Uh, on the uh, it just you know it's pretty cool. It's, it's not many songs do that, but I thought yeah. it was interesting that she chose to do that. So yeah, you know it, it, chorus, it was something like tempo changes. It's pretty cool. It slows down. They might have but did as it on the world purpose. stops turning as the you know the line goes. So it's pretty neat. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's kind of reminds me of uh, shout. How you know you're a little bit softer, a little bit softer now, kind of like that kind of feel. Down, but so you can, you know, you can play around with that a little bit. The the big thing with it, uh, with Good Luck Babe and stuff like that, again, she's popular right now, so people are gonna ask for it. We'll see in a year what's popular then. You know, every every year is something different, and we gotta be prepared for what is the next hot popular song. You know, if you're not playing it, Pink Pony Club is a bang. Straight up all the college girls will sing that. I mean, all, okay, let me rephrase that. All you need is the chorus, and the, the pre-chorus of What Have You Done, and then the Pink Pony Club chant, and that's all you need from it, but that's a good 45 seconds there. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you, you, you could. You could do that. Oh, I'm a, the college, I, I will say the college, the mixing for the college dance clubs, definitely the last few weddings I've done, has translated over like all the current bangers that I'm playing in the college clubs, you know, like tipsy, but I'm playing a uh, remix with tipsy and the tipsy uh, things like that. They're all really hitting and sadly, or strong, you know, what is uh, miles on it? Um, Austin is still banging at weddings for me. Um, uh, what's up? I had some help. I had like, some help that always does one thirty BPM. That right there has been been banging for yeah. the past, you know, two and a half months for me. Yeah. I mean, but I'm also like, like Matt would be playing. I'm playing the, re now I'm just going at the remixes with him. Unless I know I can't. But there's a lot of, you know, like I had some help. It starts dragging after the first chorus. Just like half yeah. of them, you know, hits on the mark, you know, on the charts. They really start, even ushers, yeah, unless you're playing, you know. I even find myself playing verse, verse, chorus, Luda, chorus out. So the song doesn't drag. Yeah. That's why you got a quick mix, mix, buddy. Yep. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. no. Again, Nobody I, wants to I, hear I, it. I, 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 again, you, I don't understand. You guys want a quick mix? You go ahead. I'm going to say no because I don't see people dragging. I see people enjoying the song the whole entire time. Sometimes it's that. needed and warranted. You depends know, on it really there's a few songs yes here and there song the here and there yes but most songs no oh, there's there's songs i'm not i don't have the i don't have the set to mix out of like bright side anything from shania twain journey well journey i will edit the song up so i'm eliminating the guitar solos in my while i'm mixing it and more often than not i'm dropping it into levels anyway y'all oh, thanks uh, feel that one don't you <laughs> i've been playing that for years <laughs> Ooh, I but a... here, there's all that stuff that some of them you just can't quick mix. Backstreet Boys, mm. Queen, Fat Bottom Girls. There's a lot you just you have to play out and just deal with it unless you're playing a remix. Mm. And, th you know, there are a couple of really good remixes of, the, like, I've actually taken the last couple of weeks when my daughter goes to bed and I've been revamping my one of my crates, and it's just wedding hits that are all remixes. And I've gone through the whole crate and redone it, and I'm I'm on the letter W right now. I just want to finish it already. It's a bit of two. He's almost project. done. Right. Preparation. More less practice and more preparation on the laptop. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a, as much time as I spend practicing, I will spend prepping. Make mm -hmm. no mistake about it. And the the ideas I get like in the club where I'm like, that would sound good together, but yeah. I don't have a big enough pair to try it on the fly at the club. 
I'll I'll make a you know send myself a message, be like, try this and this, run home, work through that a couple hundred times, be like, yeah, that's great, or no, that was awful. What were you thinking? Like I was trying to, I, I've got it down fairly well doing OMG into dynamite, but I'm still not happy with it, and you know working things out like that. But they come to me when I'm sitting in the booth in the club going, yeah, that would be a cool little mash. Go for it. Well, again, it all depends on how you want to try things, how you want to do things. And sometimes things work, sometimes things don't work. And that's oh, yeah. that right there is uh, the life of a DJ, I would probably say. What about you, uh, what about you Jordan? What do you think? Do you think it's a, a lot of practice or do you think it's a lot of uh, prep? I'm, I do more prep than practicing when I'm by myself. Um, like I said, I've come up with ideas and we'll go back to them, but I'm more setting cue points and trying to find some stuff that works and some beats, you know, and keys that go together. Um, yeah, and that that's the important thing. I, uh, Mike, Mike, Mike just said, uh, Me Loves Paradise by the Dashboard Light is making a comeback here, and it's a whole song. I, I, I can't remember who it was. Someone was asking to get the... Freebird! Free Freebird! Freebird! Free never, never played that in my life. Oh, uh, I've played it plenty of times. You get people out there singing, and they, even the part where the you know he's talking about uh, kind of the baseball thing, like they're going to have do it, um, and it's kind of a, a baseball announcer <laughs> making, uh, you know, suggestions with he, what he's saying, first base, second base, and Third on the way to go to home, and I was going to stop right there. Uh, someone was asking, I can't remember who it was. Someone was asking to have one without uh, part of it in it. But um, it, it's it's a long song, but you know what? If people want it and people are out there singing, I've had people out there sing the whole entire song. Um, is and yeah, it is. Bathroom, bathroom break, getting a drink. That's eight minutes and 29 seconds of golden, golden time for us. Yeah, and again, if, if someone if someone wants that, if you get a, a group of people who are into that, it, it, again, you, the way you could kind of see if it works right, if you do, uh, if you do uh, time warp first, if they're in time warp, they're gonna go into Meat Love because Meat Love was in uh, in the movie as well. Um, right. He plays the Frankenstein like character, and uh, he was in there. And again, he's got they got a couple uh, parts in that movie, but you do time warp first. And then you do, uh, you know, <laughs> Paradise by Dash Bar Light, uh, you easily soak up 15 minutes, 20 minutes right there. Yeah, people are having fun, uh -huh. enjoying themselves. But you, again, you guys see, is this crowd ready to do it? And again, I, I've had it, and people who are in it, and not like one or two people, like 25, 30 people all singing that song to each other and acting it out is, is it's pretty, pretty crazy sometimes. Mike oh, says, yeah. oh, yeah, definitely. And then, oh, Adrian E., good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Um, and then uh, New Picard said, Buddy will bring you anything you buy from Brian as long as you make him a mayo or whip salad dressing hot dog. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, he, he likes mayonnaise disgusting. on his hot dogs. No. That's religious. No, what? no, Lock. no. No, mayo's no. Lock. Mayo's good on a hot dog. What are you guys talking oh about? Oh my god, that's it. No, <laughs> you and Kevin. I, who, who's getting out of here? Get him out of here. You and Kevin both. You guys are friends. I, now. I was watching some, something on the Pornhub channel about that earlier. Uh. No, you gotta have it. It's like a. It's like an <laughs> like putting dog. broccoli on white pizza. You don't oh. do it. Oh, that's good too. Oh, oh my gotta, god. Uh. He's California. Put, it's okay. Okay, he uh, lives in California. He's anyway. okay. He's exempt. We have Mexican Cal food. Elote is like. Have you ever had an elote hot dog where it's like okay? I'll give you that. I'll give you the elote. Yeah, think of that. He's in Southern California. There's there's differences. We wrap our I'm hot dogs in bacon here. It's cheese and ranch. You, yeah, I, I'm not kidding. There are women that walk around with bottles of ranch in their purse. People go to no raising canes. People go to no raising canes. Better be hidden valley uh, brand because if it's not, then there and there better be a camera crew filming that because otherwise, it ain't happening around me. All right, all right, all right. Qu sh a show of hands here. Who here likes raising canes? Obviously. Oh what wow! Only two never of us had like raising it. Canes? What? Not around uh, here. Is that raising canes in New York? Not where I am. How about you? Where are you at? Cool thing. You got raising canes by you? 
No. Nope. Nope. Wow. Yeah, raisin canes. Wow. Fire. See, I, I I like raisin. I don't like cane sauce. I'll use sweet baby rays or another barbecue sauce. I don't like cream based sauces. I, I yeah, the sauce is a little like weird. That. So I mean, no we have. I mean, we have cookout. Yeah, that's down that's, south. Yeah. <laughs> sure, but the ra chance? raisin canes does they do they do two things: chicken tenders and French fries, and they have their cane well, sauce. They only have one in New York. They only have one in New York. Four in South Carolina, two in North I've Carolina. Oh, not none, none in, in Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. Okay. And I've yeah, raising kids. They're 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 all through Chicago. They have California. I guess this just like uh, Culver's. Culver's is not out west. Culver's is yeah, Midwest yeah, and uh, like East and uh, the South, but not uh, not out in California yet. So uh, like you guys don't have you guys don't have in and out. So <laughs> nope, they have in and out. Oh, oh, dreamy, dreamy. What about rallies? Really? No. Checkers. You mean Carl's Jr.? Checkers. No, Checkers rallies. That's that Good that's near Checkers to me is 40 minutes away, uh northwest of me. Uh, we just got a I like Checkers. We just, we just got a Dutch Brothers or Dutch Bros coffee. Don't have those there. Have a, you don't have those there? They just no. opened like it's like a two hour line to get in. Um uh, they just opened one in like Southern California. I don't understand. Adrian Ease is in and out is awesome. Yeah, of course it is. Most definitely. No checkers near me. I have to go to Connecticut or New York City. All right. Who New here? Jersey. I want to see a show of hands. Uh, and Mike says we have checkers. Yeah, checkers. I love their French fries. And they used to have these little mini apple pies where were delicious, too. They don't have them anymore. Um, but their fries are delicious. Uh, question here. Going to show of hands. I know uh, I feel bad for Dinah Blaine because he, he doesn't have them in his uh, country. Uh, but I want to see a show of hands here. Who here... Um, has gone to or has had In and Out Burger, gone to California or Las Vegas. Uh, I know, well, Kurt, I mean, uh, well, Matt, at least, at least, so, at least so once Matt a week. and Brentley, only two here have been to In and Out, right? I've, I've oh, had it once. Oh, the, you've the had it like once. Yeah. Oh, wow. So even Kurt in from was, Australia has had in and out burger. To. Wow. We, we, well, yeah. in the yeah, south here. Go yeah. I got we gotta go for a trip. Uh, Kevin says you love uh, Red Robin, Red Sauce. Oh, Red Robin. Rings. Oh yeah. Well, Adrian oh, raised yeah. his I'll, hand too. <laughs> yeah, I like Red Robin. Red Robin. I love Red Robin. Robin. I, the Red Robin bite me close, unfortunately. It sucks. Um, but the, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, um, yeah. oh god. I can't think of the name of the hamburger place. There's one not far from uh, Jordan and Taylor, um, and there's one in um, Tinley Park. Tinley Park? Yeah, I want to say Tinley Park. Is it your? It's your Tinley. It's right off Harlem Avenue and, and uh, I-80. Uh, I can't remember the name of the place, but they have really good hamburgers. Really. Shoops? What scoops? Shoops. 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 That's it. Shoops. Uh, they're they're franchised. They don't have too many Never. locations. Five Guys. Five Guys is good. Oh, five um, guys. Yeah, we have a ton of five guys. Yeah, I've got a couple five guys five around here. Eight. They're too yeah. greasy sometimes. Five guys. Five guys is five guys is pretty good, but yeah, shoot, uh, shoot, uh, shoops. I, I love their hamburgers. They have right there. Uh, yeah, those are delicious burgers. Those are uh, worth every penny. And for a fat guy, they're they make a fat guy happy. No, but nothing beats out a classic bar that's got a really good burger. You know. I what about big boy? Cheaper than, than than going to the fast food places. Uh, well, Sh Shoops hey, is not really. Yeah. It's more like a diner, and, it, and their burgers are good size, and they're thick, they're meaty, and they're juicy. As long they're, as it's not fran corporate franchise, you're good. If it's if it's one of those small, it, they're, 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 they're one of the best burger joints on the. They're, they're independent. Okay, independent. That, that that's all you need to say. That's good. Currently, what are you saying? Uh, buddy, you actually, or uh, Taylor and Jordan, you have access to this one place. It's on the north side of Chicago called Moody's Pub. And they have probably one of the top two or three burgers on the north side of Chicago. And Moody's, Damn. I've had it. I probably say, I, I feel there's better places than that. You know, it, it's, 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 like, uh, it's like Hackney's. Hackney's? Hackney's oh, in, but, in, in Glenview. Yeah, well, they're Glenview. What? They were they were more than just that, but like Hackney's, Hackney's is okay. But their hamburgers, like last time I went to Hackney's, Tracy and I, I found their hamburgers very small, and they're very expensive. But they're 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 premium ground Shrink. steak. Shrinkflation. What's what about that? Akuma's? Black Castle. Corner. 
Oh, White there? Castle. There you go. It's sliders. Yeah. I'm, well, Pumas. <laughs> I was never a big fan of. They're good, but not my favorite. No. And uh, being where I, you know, growing up on the you try a few times. White Castles, man. This is the, where, where, Castles, where we go to with uh, when you're talking here. It's on only the show. good when we talk about DJ stuff and, and going to Burger Yeah, I've yeah. never had. I've never had White Castle. Because you're, uh, you're missing out. Never I've been had. listening you're, with the Howard you're a and fortunate Puma, man, sir. Maybe whatever it was. If you if you like onions, you'll like White Castle. I don't like I onions. Onion. I don't like White Castle. So I, I even actually onions. made a song of that. I don't like onions on my AI. <laughs> I had that on my AI channel. So <laughs> you want you you can look look me up on there. It's the same thing. TVM Productions. It's on uh, Sono. Uh, S O N S O U N. Uh, right, right. S O U N. Suno. S U N O. S U N O. S U N O. I'm sorry. S U N O. Uh, you can look me up on there. Uh, you can look at my channel and. Listen to the music and see what you guys think. Uh, and then Kevin says Sheets, uh, Bam, or Boom is good, too. I know Sheets, uh, when I was out east, they're known more for their food. They happen to be like a fast food restaurant with a drive through that's crazy busy. Oh, yeah, and by the way, they sell gasoline. Kind of like you guys have in, Cal in uh, Ohio, um, uh, UDF, Uni um Unified uh, Dairy Farmers. Um, they do premium ice cream, and they have a C-store, and they sell gasoline. And I will tell you, I went there. My one friend lives in the, in Columbus. Went to UDF. Um, they're in the Columbus area. Very good ice cream, but I think our Overwise is better. But at the time when I went there last, uh, they had a butterscotch ice cream, which I fell in love with. So uh, there we go, full oh, circle again, talking food at the end of the show. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Dixon, anything for you? Anything uh, food-wise that you love going to? I always go to Five Guys. Yeah, Five Guys is Terrible. pretty good. And then, uh, Terrible. Jeff, what about you? Terrible and expensive. Just good, uh, I agree. good burger joints, independently owned. That's where I like to go. Mom, pa. There you go. And uh, you know, there's one really great little hot dog hamburger stand down in uh, South Carolina, that uh, cool thing knows very well. Sam's uh, Corner. There we go. It, his place Sam's for and burgers and fries, man. And they do milkshakes, right? Um, I th I think we did, but I think I don't know if we have. Um, I, I think we do. Yeah, I think yeah, we did. Are, are they closed for the season for the winter, or are they oh, stay well, open? Well, we're gonna close after either. I think we're close before Christmas, maybe a little after Thanksgiving to close for the season. We're going to open back up in March. So in March, if you guys want to go to South Carolina and go visit Hunter and, and buy him lunch. But if you go there, the thing you need to do first, you go to you go to Dunkin' Donuts, get him a or $5 Starbucks. gift card. Or Starbucks. <laughs> or Starbucks, $5 gift card. I, I think Dunkin's is a bigger fan. Either one, give him a $5 gift card. And then get a whole hunter and meet him there at Sam's Corner. Have a hot dog, have a burger, have a milkshake. Give him a gift card and say thank you, Hunter. That would be really, really awesome. But with that said, now it's come to time to the end of the show. Again, we always end up with food because uh, you know we like food. <laughs> we like tasty things, <laughs> especially after a long gig. Yeah, yeah. I, I know uh, DJ Brantley with his group right now in Wisconsin. They have a place called Quick Trip with K. Uh, they're taking pictures, selfies, and um, I gotta start taking some selfies here for some of the places I go to after uh, after a wedding, just to uh, just to be on his little uh, his little group, <laughs> just to razz him a little bit. So maybe you guys should do that. Take a picture of a selfie. Where do you guys go after a gig? What's your after a gig place? You know, well maybe we'll talk about it next time. So with that said, thank you all out there. Kurt, thank you so much for coming in from Australia. We love you. Uh, love seeing you here. Uh, and we love you guys all out there. So make sure, again, stay tuned. Thank you all. Have a good night. Peace out.